Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a few words. First of all, I want to express uh, my gratitude, uh, the gratitude of, uh, of UNPASIP, uh, as well as the rest of us uh, from the UN in, in Cyprus, for the Council's continuing unanimous uh, support for our work on the ground. Uh, as you just heard the President uh, uh, saying, um, the Council uh, has agreed to uh, renew uh, UNPASIP's mandate for a further six months on a unanimous uh, basis. Uh, during the, uh, the consultations a few minutes ago, uh, they in particular uh, expressed support uh, for the work of UNPASIP in terms of maintaining uh, stability and calm in the buffer zone and supporting a return to normal conditions in Cyprus, including uh, through the mission's uh, intercommunal work. Uh, as you also heard the President say, the Council continues to show very strong support for the Cypriot communities on the island and for a better future for all Cypriots. Uh, I also should note that a number of uh, Council members uh, expressed um, uh, their interest and desire to see uh, a review of UNFACIP's operations on the ground, and we've taken very careful note of that. This is something that, as you know, uh, the Council members uh, have expressed uh, as part of their overall interest in keeping all UN peacekeeping operations under review in order to aim at further and better efficiency and effectiveness of UN operations uh, on the ground. And with that, I will give the floor to Mr. Aidy. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, I briefed the Council in uh, quite some detail about uh, the, uh, the way to the Crown Montana uh, conference on Cyprus and also the, what transpired during the conference. And I uh, first would like to say that uh, the Council, as well as Elizabeth and myself and the Secretary General, all very much think that uh, this is not the time for engaging in the blame game. There's uh, more than enough of that going around. It seems that everybody is of the view that uh, everybody but themselves uh, did everything wrong and they were the only one doing it right. But I think we have to admit that there was a collective failure of stitching together a deal uh, in Grand Montana, despite of the fact that uh, uh, towards the end of the conference we saw more and more of the pieces of the puzzle actually coming on the table. Uh, that came late, but it came, but uh, we were not able to stitch it together to a total deal because we had this perennial problem of uh, the chicken and egg, what comes first, uh, what comes second, and uh, all sides in many ways continued to reserve their final gifts uh, to they saw the cards of the other side. Uh, the Secretary General uh, and the rest of us were trying very actively throughout the 10 days of the conference and particularly in his presence on the 30th of June and then uh, again on the 6th of July to overcome this by saying that, in our view, there are a package uh, available where six separate important crucial issues are all settled. And only when they are all settled, uh, we can say that we have a deal. Uh, we thought that would be possible, but we realized that it wasn't and that the realization came at the end of the very long and rather difficult dinner that we had on the night of the 6th, uh, moving into the morning of the 7th. Um, the mood at that dinner um, led the Secretary General to conclude that uh, there was no, at least no imminent uh, purpose uh, to continue. There was no grounds for, uh, for continuing the conference. So he decided to close the conference on Cyprus, which had began on the 12th of uh, January in, um, uh, in uh, Geneva, and which then ended in the early hours of the 7th of July in Grand Montana. Now, the UN, of course, uh, will always be available if the leaders jointly decide to continue this effort. But we are in their hands. One of the most important principles of the Cyprus talks is that they are leader-led, and they can be no, nothing else. Uh, it has been my guiding light throughout this process that we have to remember that we are there to facilitate. We engage with the leaders, we engage with the guarantors, we engage with the European Union, which I want to thank for its uh, stellar support to many, many aspects of this uh, uh, process, the international financial institutions and other key players, but we cannot do it for them. It has to be 
owned by the leaders and it has to be supported by the guarantors. You've seen the Secretary General in his uh, report um, uh, and in other statements say that uh, the leaders in Cyprus now need to go through a process of reflection. Uh, we hope they will not jump to conclusions. Uh, we hope they reflect seriously on what can be done now after the uh, fact that the conference on Cyprus failed. And um, if they so do, uh, we will be available. But right now, we don't see there being a process. And um, given a number of developments uh, domestically and around the island, I think also it's quite urgent that this reflection is done uh, in the spirit of um, understanding and compromise rather than by exacerbating the differences that clearly exist. Uh, otherwise, I think it will be even more difficult to uh, restart any process, be it the process that we so far have known or some other kind of process. So um, this is what we shared with the Council. I think we can safely say that uh, every single member of the Council uh, deplored the fact that the conference failed. Uh, they urged for restraint. They underlined the importance of uh, a reflection period, a cooling off period. Uh, and, uh, and they very much underline this fundamental idea that it, of course, is up to the separate communities and their, and their elected leaders to make, uh, to make up their mind of what, uh, what to do next. We will follow that. Um, in the meantime, what we will do is to do a very substantive record of everything that has happened because it's clear, and it was also uh, an, an element of almost every, uh, every intervention by the Council, is that um, this process took... Cyprus closer than ever before to a settlement. There's more substance, more understanding, more agreements, and even more were found in Cramontana. And uh, uh, even if we are currently not in an ongoing process, it would be sad if that has, would be lost and not recorded. So we will make sure that we properly record all of this. Um, I will make sure that we work with the Secretary General now to present the report on the good offices, which uh, encapsulates all this, and we will also do our internal work. And then I think it's, uh, it's over to Cyprus to see what uh, the leaders and, of course, the neighboring countries, the guarantors, will do next. Uh, do we have <laughs> well, apostolic? Uh, two questions. First of all, the, the President of the Council said before, uh, urged the, the leaders on behalf of the Council to preserve the body of work that was done all these years. How this will be done? And second, you spoke about collective failure. You mean everyone, including the guarantors, the facilitators, everybody? Well, a group of people come together in good faith in order to solve a very complex issue with very many dimensions. And uh, when they don't, I think, we, I think the most uh, honest thing to say is that the conference failed. And I think that uh, what I see is this uh, tendency to spend more energy on uh, reflecting on what others do wrong than what people did wrong themselves is not necessarily helpful. I generally, as a general approach to the world, if I hear that somebody said I never did the mistake, only all the others did, I think it's not particularly convincing. Uh, at the same time, we have no business of engaging in that blame game. We have given a record of uh, uh, developments to the Council in the closed session, uh, but uh, we very much want to avoid being part of what is already too much, which is this blame game, which is unfortunately something that has accompanied the Cyprus process uh, over the years. Uh, I actually think that um, participants went to Grand Montana with the intention of finding a solution, and I observed that at the end they did not. And that is, uh, in my view, sad for Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, Greece, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the European Union, and the, e and the UN. Uh, well, as I said, uh, what, what we can do uh, from our side, since we have every paper, every record, every, we have uh, thousands and thousands of pages of notes from all this, so we will definitely make sure that we record all this in a proper way, um, both those parts of it that we can share with the public at some point and those parts which were better kept in, you know, in the UN system, but so that it's there. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, of course, hope that this is also something that different parties will do, but I can only guarantee that we will do that. So we will make sure that it's there. Uh, and uh, if at any time a process uh, restarts, uh, we'll be able to share what happened in this process. Um, that's what I can do. But also, 
you have, I think in your question there's something more to that question, Apostolos, and I think, you know, how can you preserve that climate that made it possible to have these talks? This is a very serious message from us, Secretary General, Elizabeth, myself, the Council, is that it's a serious responsibility not now to allow a development which will make it impossible to start again in the future. And, and I think every, I, I, those who have power and influence, they understand what I'm saying, I believe. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Aida. Betelur from the Turkish News Agency. Turkey, as one of the guarantor countries, says that the Turkish Cypriots have uh, the right over the gas resources around the island and is opposing to the launch of the drilling in eastern Mediterranean before reaching a solution. Uh, what is the UN's position on that? And my second question is the Turkish foreign minister has said today that this can't go on like this forever and there will be new and different processes from now on. Does the UN hope that the talks could resume again? Thank you. Uh, I, I will be, in my role as special advisor, I have a very clear uh, focus on facilitating the discussion between the two sides in Cyprus and in the conference between all the guarantors and the other and, and the European Union. I, I, I have learned that it's helpful to focus on that and not comment on, on other issues, but it does worry me uh, if we are now seeing increasing tension uh, around the gas uh, field uh, or the, the gas areas around Cyprus, uh, and I really hope that uh, we will not see developments which will uh, exacerbate uh, negatively or develop uh, sort of negatively the, 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 the climate for, for the talks. Um, your, uh, and then, yes, I am aware of the statements that was made by Foreign Minister Chavosolo today. I, I, um, I, I heard similar statements already immediately after uh, Kramontana. Um, Turkey was consistently saying that we were, they went to Kramontana with the aim of solving the problem. They would be there as long as it took. Um, the Foreign Minister was there for 10 days, and uh, as I understand, both he and his counterpart, Nikos Kocias, was ready to be longer if, the, if need be. But they declared that they saw it as the final conference, and this is really the time to find a settlement. So when the conference failed, he has made the point that now there's time for other parameters. We, of course, as the UN, only have one set of parameters, which is we're striving towards unification. Uh, this is something that is solidly um, based on years of Security Council support for this process. Um, it, it's what others might do in a future situation, I don't know, but, but it, this is my mandate, and I don't think my mandate includes being involved in anything but uh, trying to seek unification. Uh, how central is the uh, relation between Turkey and Europe is to uh, this uh, unification process in, in Cyprus. Uh, can you address this specific issue, yes. please? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, let me preface my answer by saying that first and foremost, the purpose of unifying Cyprus is in the interest of the Cypriots. Of course, the, the primary interested parties is the Greek Cypriot, are the Greek Cypriots, the Turkish Cypriots, and the other communities in Cyprus, Maronites and Armenians and others. They are the primary subject of this issue. But on the second layer, uh, there is no doubt about it that both from Ankara and from Brussels and from the member state of the European Union, it has been seen that it would be extreme and declared publicly that a settlement in Cyprus would significantly improve a somewhat strained relationship between Europe as the EU on the one hand and Turkey. And uh, I, I have heard many of my, uh, my friends and colleagues in, in, in Europe saying that the failure of the conference is, is also bad news in, this, in the inco this context, which is why I hope it's not the final word said about the potential for some kind of solution in Cyprus. What is the future of the UN mission in Cyprus, given the collapse of the talks and the possibility that the Security Council may want to uh, visit it and look on the ground and possibly shut it? Yeah, well, as I, as I had said a moment ago, uh, in terms of the, um, of the peacekeeping mission, the Council, for the time being, has renewed for an additional six months. Uh, as you know, UNFASIP's uh, mandate uh, comes up twice uh, every year. Uh, 
but there also has been a, been a call for, uh, by some members of the Council for review to see whether uh, it is uh, fit for purpose going forward. So we will be looking into, into that. Um, there was uh, strong support for, for the good offices um, also by the Council members. But as uh, the Special Advisor has said, uh, there's also a question of um, what, the, what the good offices will do at, uh, at the present time. We need to see what the sides will decide and uh, how they will decide to move forward. Uh, because without a process, uh, there, there will not be too much for the, for the good offices to do. If I may add something to on, on, on our side, on the... Um, uh, Elizabeth answered clearly for the it was very clear message that there will be a review but there will be a continuation for uh, uh, the, the emphasis will, will continue and they will have a review so that both those decisions seem to I mean the, 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 the council will decide but that was what we, we understood from, the, from, from what was said now for the good offices that is very much a function of what the sites think because we are only relevant if there is a process to support uh, and, and we were not making any decisions on that right now. That depends on what comes out of a reflection period and we have to be guided by the leaders because there's no point in having a good officers mission in the absence of a process. If there is a process, we will be there. And, uh, and uh, good officers as a political function is a part of the Secretary General's mandate. He always has that. Uh, any decision on the, on the mission on the ground is dependent on development. Follow up on this hydrocarbons question, because I, I heard that I'd asked a number of times, and their answer was that the UN doesn't speak to people's treaties' rights, but they hope that it won't be exasperated. Given that Cyprus has gone forward and Total and ENI are actually drilling, is your call not to exasperate directed at Turkey to not talk about it, or is it in some sense directed at the companies or Cyprus to, to pause or delay it? And on your own status as when actually employed, can you give some estimate? I know, remember the issue has come up before. If you were to say, like, do you, do you, are you now no longer employed in the sense of the UN's when actually employed status? And when, and when do you expect to make a decision whether to continue in that oh, or not? Okay. Thanks. Well, I, <laughs> two very different questions. <laughs> um, on the, um, I, uh, it's a good question, but I'm not going to go more into. I, I, um, I very much want to focus on what is my role, uh, which is to facilitate the talks between the two sides. I said what I said, um, um, and I, 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 I actually do. I understand the question, but I'm not. I don't want to elaborate more on the gas issue. Um, I have said before I'm there if I'm relevant and when I'm relevant. Uh, and uh, at some point, I assume I will not be relevant, but uh, that decision will uh, take. In any case, the benefit of when actually employed is that you're only employed when when you need it, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll come back to that at a later stage.